Hello friends, I hope all of you are fine. In my last video, I had shown you that what are the signs and symptoms and how does a doctor make provisional diagnosis of any disease on the basis of sign and symptoms. If you have not seen that video, you can get its link in description. Now in this video, we will see that what is the role of various types of investigations in making diagnosis of any disease. Now the investigations which are commonly called as tests by the patients can be of different types. They can be hematological, cytological, biochemical, radiological and many more. Well these investigations are performed for different purposes but one major intention is to either confirm or reject the provisional diagnosis of any disease. Now is this confirmation essential? Mostly yes. Because as I told you last time that different diseases can present with similar signs and symptoms and naturally the treatment of different diseases is definitely different. So before taking any decision about the treatment of any disease one has to be very much confident about the diagnosis. Now let us understand this with the same example of that young man with abdominal pain, vomiting and fever. Now that surgeon had made a provisional diagnosis of acute appendicitis in that case. Now imagine that he had not confirmed it by any investigation and straightway he had proceeded for surgery. That during surgery he found that his appendix was absolutely normal because the problem was somewhere else which had presented with similar signs and symptoms. Because there can be several other conditions which can present with the same features. Now in this case both surgeon and patients are in trouble. This problem could have been avoided if the surgeon had confirmed his diagnosis by some investigations. I'll give you another example. Epididyma orchitis and testicular torsion, they are two common conditions, especially in pediatric age group. In one case, testis is inflamed, in another case, it is twisted. In one case, antibiotics are required, in another case, urgent surgery is needed. But both of them can present with similar features and sometimes it can be very difficult for anyone to differentiate them clinically. Now here comes the role of investigation. One test. Doppler ultrasound can differentiate between these two and can help the surgeon in deciding the line of treatment. So the message is that before taking decision about any major intervention like some surgery, one has to be very confirmed about the diagnosis. Now the investigations are quite helpful for us, but can there be some hazards of investigations? The answer is yes. Let's see them one by one. Nowadays, we are having a large number of investigations easily available in our vicinity. But all of them are not required in each and every disease. And this selection of the most appropriate and most essential investigations for any disease largely depends on the provisional diagnosis of that disease. So if a patient is sent for some unrequired investigations, then it will definitely lead to loss of his precious time as well as some extra burden on his pocket. For example, if the diagnosis of any disease can be made only on the basis of X-ray alone, then there is no significance of getting some higher investigations like CT scan or MRI done in that case. The factor of time becomes even more important if you are dealing with some emergency condition. Some investigations like X-ray, CT scan involve the exposure of radiation. Similarly, in some investigations, some contrast is used and some patients can be allergic to it. So such investigation should be advised only if they are essentially required. Now let's talk about the hazards of investigations in terms of doctor-patient communication. No doubt that every patient will prefer a doctor who prescribes only a minimum number of investigations which are essentially required. So if a doctor advises a large number of unnecessary investigations, many a times patients prefer not to consult him. Similarly, an over-dependency on these investigations can also be hazardous for the doctor. If he has not made a proper provisional diagnosis on the basis of history and examination, then his line of treatment will largely depend on the result of investigation. And sometimes these reports can also be wrong. For example, if a doctor has not examined his patient properly and even the sonologist has failed to pick up the inflamed appendix and has reported it to be normal, then the treatment can go in an absolutely wrong direction. So one should not be very much dependent on the reports and should try to make a provisional diagnosis of his own. But the most important hazard is that if you are too much dependent on investigations, you may gradually lose your interest and skill of history taking and clinical examination. 
Now just imagine that you visited to a doctor with some abdominal complaints. He asked you only one or two questions, capped his hand only at one or two places on your abdomen and straightway advised you for a USG abdomen. How would you feel? So you can call the investigations like a double-edged sword. They are required but they should be used very cautious. Investigations are supplementary only to a proper clinical diagnosis. They should not substitute the steps of history taking and clinical examination. You won't believe but more than 80% of diagnosis can be made only on the basis of history and examination alone. Investigations are required only to confirm or reject them. They should be used only as a supplementary tool and not as a shortcut in making the diagnosis. So I hope you liked this video. If so, please share it with your friends. In my next video, I'll talk about that what is the significance of spending some time in taking history and performing examination of any patient. We'll meet again very soon. Till then, stay healthy, stay safe and always keep learning in your life. Goodbye.